but one of the projects we're working on is creating the Latin American dollar. And, and that's basically an interbank network uh, for 12 countries initially. It's, it's done by the Inter-American Development Bank with a whole bunch of partners. And we're building this infrastructure and basically upgrading all of these nations to modern payments infrastructure so they can actually do real-time payments, they can do exports, you know, person-to-person -person payments or, or SMEs exporting things and getting paid in real time and really improving the lives of people and giving them access to better money, better payments and helping them grow. So it's, it's quite a nice use case for what we're part of. Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. And that was the CEO of Quant, Gilbert Verdian, a founding member with Ripple in the Digital Pound Foundation. Is Ripple one of those many partners that are going to bring to fruition the Latin American dollar to 12 countries? Let me ask you this. Do cats jump on kitchen counters? Of course. So. In this video, we're going to hear more from Gilbert. But first, I want to cover on how it's looking for the SEC and the Ripple case. Because right now, it's looking very good for Ripple and XRP and very bad for the SEC. Charles Hoskinson had one of his very long and engaging live streams yesterday where he answered lots of comments and questions in a, well, of course, somewhat dramatic way, but I happen to like his videos. I saw some comments of people who said they don't like his videos, but that's okay. It's, you know, <laughs> to each his own. He does, though, speak to some very good points in this clip regarding the SEC. Have a listen. And Charles, how do you feel about the SEC's flip-flop on their position on the Hinden opinion speech? So. What they say in public, what they say in court, it's two different things. Um, I remember Giuliani doing this. We have evidence that Trump's election was fraudulent. Uh, the, uh, the, you know, Biden cheated. It was the great con. Or, or, they go to the judge and the judge says, well, do you have any evidence of fraud? No, 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 no. I want to get this barred. Come on now. They got a case to win. They, and so, you know, they're, they're moving a little bit. Uh, but the unintended or intended consequence is that they've gone from clarity to anti-clarity. It's not fair as a regulator to tell an industry one thing, but then to reverse course and say, well, we didn't really mean it. It's just not fair. You know, if it's a personal opinion, you issue a statement after the fact, if you can't get them to retract it there, to say this was just a personal opinion and does not reflect the opinion of the agency. But you can't just let it ride, let opinions be written on it, and have the industry push forward, and then change your mind because it's convenient for a particular enforcement case that you're doing. But we've noticed this with this particular government, at all levels of this particular government, in different branches of this government, where they say one thing, they do another thing, and whatever is politically convenient, they do. It, it's not good leadership. It's not how prior administrations ran things on both sides of the aisle. And it's just hurtful to everybody. And, it, and it's not a partisan thing. It's just a clarity thing. When you're in an industry, you'd like to know what the rules are. But if the rules are ever changing and undiscernible or are staged in a way where it's impossible to comply, so you're regulated out of existence, it's pretty crazy. It's almost Kafka-esque. You must have a license to do business, but you can't get a license to do the business. But then when you ask about it, you're told to get a license to do the business. It makes no sense, and this is not how you compete, and it's how you damage a $2 trillion industry. Right. So whatever is politically convenient is an example, he says, of how to damage a $2 trillion industry. But when you really dive deep into what Joseph Hall said on Tony's Thinking Crypto channel, all the mass media today has picked up his quotes. Joseph Hall used to be with the SEC. And he says, I'm not sure what the SEC is planning on proving through the XRP litigation either. I continue to be perplexed why the SEC decided to bring that case. 
their entire regulatory project could be basically shut down. They lose all their merits here. And I think there's a pretty good chance that they will lose all the merits. Wow, that is a strong statement. Well, clearly this is getting this is getting serious. This is getting dangerous. This is getting beyond belief. Uh, we've got a tweet from Representative Warren Davidson. He is in the U.S. Congress, and he said in his tweet that clearly we are on the right path. He's talking about the United States with the Keep Your Coins Act, protecting self custody for all Americans. This is a part of the Defend Freedom hashtag because uh, the regulator the regulator in Canada warns crypto exchanges not to promote self-custodial wallets. This is crazy. The Ontario Securities Commission, they sent the tweets from the Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong and Kraken's CEO Jesse Powell to the Canadian police. The tweet that came from Brian Armstrong was this one here. Concerning to see stuff like this happening, he's talking about the Canadian Deputy Prime Minister under the Emergencies Act, where banks can immediately freeze and suspend bank accounts without a court order. He said that especially in such an economically free place like Canada, self-custodial wallets are important. So this is really not sitting well with the regulator in Canada. And if you can believe it, this is one I couldn't believe. We've got a self-custodial uh, solution maker here. It's called Nunchuk. And they were ordered by the Ontario Superior Court of Justice. Uh, they sent this Mariva injunction ordering them to freeze and disclose information about the assets involved in the Freedom Convoy 2022 movement, and they gave the copy of their official response. Well, as you know, that's just technically impossible. So the Bitcoin wallet rejected Canada's court demand to freeze funds, citing, yeah, it just can't do it. But this isn't a laughing matter. No matter where you live in the world, whether you are a U.S. citizen or not, you want to use John Deaton's Connect to Congress form. You definitely want to keep sending your, your belief, your story, your reasons for disagreeing with this sort of regulatory action. And I know that uh, you might think that it doesn't matter because you're not a U.S. citizen. Well, there is a form for international people who are outside of the realm of being a U.S. citizen. And also, I'm not saying that the United States can blaze a trail for the whole world. We know that's not true. But we do know that if the United States does go in protecting freedom, we usually have a lot of countries then that follow suit. So I think that it is definitely something you don't want to sleep on. Let's jump to SBI. And the reason why we pay attention, of course, is not only just because they're a bank that uses XRP in so many ways, but there's just so much going on with this company and the way they use the digital asset XRP. And they're in uh, Africa and they're selling used cars from Japan, which are very, very popular in Africa. And so the SBI Motor tweeted this out today and I thought to myself, oh good, we've got some activity because Mr. Kitao wants to buy a bank again, or at least take a stake in a bank in Africa, uh, which he had. And that, that will give the op opportunity, of course, to use the digital asset XRP as a bridge currency for that corridor. So that's why I'm kind of paying attention to what the business is doing in Africa. But I saw the 2009 BMW for $1,800. I thought, Gosh, that's a good price. Is it really that price? And I went to um, the website and yeah, it was really nice to see the inventory's gotten wider and it's gotten deeper. So business is good. They've expanded into a lot of countries. 
But sure enough, uh, I can't find anything wrong with this. The mileage isn't that bad. $1,800. And when I went to the Kelly Blue Book, it has a fair market range of 6000 to 8000 So I thought, wow, they are really priced to sell in Africa. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to point that out because uh, paying attention to what SBI does does uh, have this impact that spills over into the XRP ecosystem. Okay, I'm going to let Gilbert Verdian take you out on this video. I'm so sorry. I'm not going to be able to do a fluff tonight. I am in a rush to get somewhere. This is very uh, rare occurrence for me not to have a fluff at the end of my videos, but please forgive me. I wanted to get this uh, uploaded for everyone to hear, and so um, I'm just going to let Gilbert take it out tonight. So do take care. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye. As, as I was saying, this technology, it doesn't come around often and this transformation doesn't come around often. It, you know, I think the last time we had this big impactful change was dot com era, you know, about 20, 20 years ago. So we're, we're right in the middle of this new type of digitization and tokenization that's happening around digital assets that everyone's adopting.